why aren't you getting any listings right now? It seems like there are either one or two things. There's two different real estate markets out there where people are getting yeah. listings and not, or maybe two different real estate professionals out there. Where ah, they're hmm. I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it because it's the dichotomy of the haves and have nots. Hmm. And it's not the markets that have and have nots. It's the agents that have and have nots. And here's why, Chris. In every market across the United States, homes are still selling. Mm -hmm. I think homes projected being listed. National Association of Realtors says that uh, I think it's what four between four and four and a half million homes will probably sell this year. Now that's not the six million that we had in previous years, but there's still home selling. There are home selling, and so when I talk to agents, and if they say, "Well, I I don't have any of those," I ask, "Why not?" Because there are listings out there. Why don't you have them? Well, I think that, I think is the question we need to attack today. I think, you know, it's easy to blame the market. You know what I mean? Yes. Especially these days. It seems like the headlines that we read about in the news, yeah. they affirm that, oh, it must be bad out there. You know, it must the real estate market must be tough out there. If you read the news and, the, and if you're experiencing that and you read the news, it's like affirming to say, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. That's just the way it is. But that's not true, right? What is the truth in the marketplace right now? What is the truth when it comes to listings? And what is the truth as to why that person down the street or maybe the person in the office next door is getting all these listings and I'm not? Well, it's interesting. You know, for every three people uh, in real estate who I've talked to who have said, gosh, it's kind of tough out there. There's always that one that's like, oh, things are actually really busy. I'm just thinking about this. I was talking to Ted Williams. He sells real estate yep. out of Portland, Oregon last week, or maybe it was earlier this week. And he was saying that since the beginning of January, he's, he's really just had a lot of listings coming in and he's just keeping up with it all. And, you know, like that contrast, somebody else who I was talking to in, in the same market, I'm not going to say any names or anything like that, but it contrasts um, another agent that I was talking to in the market. He was like, yeah, it's really, really dry out here in Portland. There's, there's nothing going on. And it's like, hmm, who's right? And I think, you know, when you go dig down a little bit deeper, when you ask, well, let's take the person who is selling more real estate. They're getting listings right now and they're selling real estate. They start probing, right? It's like, well, why? 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 And you know, it's funny. I was talking to Ted Williams at first and he was like, yeah, it's just real busy. Well, why is that? And he had to stop and think about it. You know, he had to like, well, that's a good question. I, I don't. I didn't ask myself, why am I busy, right? And as he thought about it, he said, um, well, well, it's because the, I- In truth, he doesn't have time to stop and think <laughs> about why am I busy right. because he's so busy. He's like, thanks for asking me that question. I don't have time to answer this right now. Well, the thing is, what he found, like when he shared with me, is like, well, I never stopped doing the things that I was doing. And what, right. he's, and what he meant by that, I believe, is that you know in recent years, real estate was a lot busier, like 2020, uh, 2021, a little first part of 2022, um, you know, like the market was pretty hot. The market was pretty fast. Um, more homes were selling. During that time, it would have been easy to stop doing a lot of the activities like, I don't know, marketing, uh, staying in touch branding. with branding, building your reputation, staying in touch with your personal networks, mm -hmm. all, you know, all that kind of stuff. He never well, stopped. It's, it's easy to stop that because you think it will just perpetuate if you want to have a sustainable business, you don't stop the things that are working, even when you get busy. So mm. here's a perfect exa example. In our own real estate practice, in our own real estate team, we have not seen a slowdown at all. Mm -hmm. We're busy. I mean, sure, could we take more listings? Would we like to take more listings? Of course. But does that say that we're sitting there on the sidelines going, wow, why have things dried up? Mm. No, we're not thinking that at all. And there's one factor that I think differentiates what we're experiencing and everybody else. What's that? We didn't stop the marketing. Mm. We didn't stop the branding. We didn't stop the communication to everybody in our network, in our connections, and our contacts. Why? Because we, we've we done that before, and we've experienced the pain. Mm -hmm. We know what it ex well, like. What happens when you stop that communication, when you stop that branding, when you stop that, that constant, that consistent exposure? We know what happens. 
what happens is you go to the Sahara. <laughs> well, it's in a typical year, you have a little bit of seasonality. Most people get busy during the summer, uh, spring, summer. And that's actually when they stop marketing. And then, of course, fall and winter is usually pretty dry for most people in real estate. Well, that happens with hot market cycles too, right? So 2020, 2021, super hot market, right? You you didn't necessarily have to do the marketing. You didn't have to do prospecting. You didn't have to do all the work to, to maintain that consistency. Why? Because the leads were, the, the business was just coming flying at you fast and furious, right? And so a lot of times for most people, it's like, especially if it's there and haven't been through the experience before, it's that they get busy and then they stop doing those things because out of just necessity, like it's like, I don't have time to do it. I don't know. So I'm just not going to do the marketing. This is so exciting to me. People, I, I, I think so many real estate agents are so fearful about what's happening in the marketplace. And I look at this and I'm really excited. Mm. And here's why is that there are more real estate agents licensed in the United States now than ever historically. And we're not selling more homes in the United States this year than we did a few years ago. So this is what's really exciting to me is that this creates an opportunity. I think so many of us in real estate, we look at it and it's like, oh man, there's scarcity in the marketplace. This is really scary. And I look at it and I think, wow, what an opportunity because I know what's about to happen. Mm. What's about to happen, there's going to be a culling of the herd. There is going to be a massive decrease in the number of real estate agents in the marketplace because they weren't doing the things that we're talking about, which means that they can't cut it and they're going to have to go back to their job, which is fine. No judgment there, but I see opportunity mm -hmm. because the marketplace, that piece of the pie that they were going after is now mine. It's now mine because mm -hmm. I didn't stop. I didn't stop the marketing. I didn't stop the branding. I didn't stop the communication. Even when we got so crazy busy that I was like, man, maybe we should stop doing that. It's like, no. No, you make the, hey, well, the sun is shining, so to speak, right? Yep. And that's, you know, I remember, you know, I was talking to your brother, Jonathan. Uh, we were out, we were actually filming earlier today. And, you know, he's actually, uh, he was so busy during 2020, 2021, first part of 2022. And I'm like working 14 hour days, you know, six days a week type stuff, just, just grinding, grinding. And during that time we'd be talking and he's talking, he's like, yeah, hey, you got, you got to do it. Well, you got to make the money while the building is available. Right. And so that also gave him peace of mind so that now he can in, continue to invest in growth. He can invest in um, expanding that business, but you know, it makes me wonder. So, it's great for people like us or your brother or Ted who were doing those things and were consistent. But let's talk about those who maybe have to play catch up. They're like, wait a minute. Sure. OK, I'm not throwing in the towel. Real estate's my gig. How can I catch up? And so that I can start experiencing a taste of what you guys are seeing. Yeah. So my questions are, number one. Are you focused on your personal networks right now? Are you focused on them? And are you communicating with your personal networks? Mm. Yes or no? And my guess would be no. Mm. Because if somebody is sitting there struggling right now and they're complaining and they're, and they're having a hard time, my guess is that you're not focused on the right things. Mm. Maybe, maybe you're focused on the shiny pinning syndrome. And that is, Okay, somebody sold me this idea that I should go buy leads online. Mm -hmm. I'm like, is your house built yet? Mm. Is your foundation set yet? Is your business solid yet? If not, do like you you need blinders. Mm -hmm. And the blinders are completely focused on your personal networks, on your reputation growth, and marketing yourself as that expert in the marketplace. These are the things that we must be focusing on because the number one reason that real estate clients are going to choose you over somebody else is based on your reputation. And your reputation actually equates 100% to how much they trust you to take care of their needs and their concerns. And so if you're not focused on what it is that it takes to fulfill on building that trust, 
elevating your reputation so that people trust you over somebody else, then you're losing. Mm -hmm. And I always ask this question, always ask this question, is if you ever lose a listing, if you ever lose a buyer to somebody else, you need to be asking, why is that? Mm -hmm. And here's, I guarantee 100%, it's not about commission. <laughs> it's not about anything like that. What it's about is that they trusted the other person to get them what they wanted. More than they trusted you. More than right? they trusted me. And so that's where we need to examine is like, okay, how do I bridge the gap of trust? Like, So we have a gap of trust. I need to bridge that gap and I need to exceed it. How do I do that? Through my personal networks, reputation growth, and marketing. These are the three ways that you do that. You know, let's talk, let's get, let's, let's get granular, maybe a little bit more detail. Um, so when we talk about, you know, staying in touch with your contacts and connections, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, and here's the thing, like, here's how serious we take it. You know, I was talking with your brother this morning and he was like, you know, um, one of the things I did to like make sure that I was going to be able to continue to get the business, be able to continue to get the listings is he went back to doing an old school method of writing personal letters to people. Like oh, just, personal handwritten notes. You know, like just, and, and he's going a little bit further than just saying, Hey, how you doing? He's just a little bit of an update. Here's what's going on. Here's what we've been up to. Kids are in college now. Just, just a personal update, you know, to not just to his friends, not just to his family, past clients, really anybody he knows. He's just getting back to that stuff. And it's like, wow, like, and I know he's a busy guy, right? I know he's got a lot going on and yet he's still taking the time to do these activities, to stay in touch with his contacts and connections. And by the way, that's not the only thing that he does, right? An email, he sends emails out on a monthly basis, providing real estate tips. He creates videos and shares that with his clients. Uh, he's always thinking about, all right, how do I just stay in front of my contacts, my connections, the people in my sure. sphere of influence, so that I'm, like you said, top of mind. So think about all the ways that you could do that, right? Like there's probably an infinite number of ways that you can do that. Yeah, I mean, we have like ways that we like to do it, but like Jonathan, he's really, you know, he's really about that connection, about that relationship. And so he leverages that point. Um, you know, when we talk about the growing your reputation, you know, like the way we do that is by marketing listings. Yeah, we market listings. We shoot a lot of videos, market listings online all the time through our emails through our social media, with Facebook and Instagram, YouTube videos. We love doing YouTube. Now, Gary, as soon as we say, well, we market, you know, the way we grow our reputation, it, one of the ways in which we grow our reputation, particularly around getting listings, is by marketing listings. Of course, someone says, well, I don't have any listings. So, you know, I can't do that. Oh, you're you right. So you, we, sh we should just quit. Yeah, <laughs> so we could go home. No, but no. even if you don't have a listing, what could you do? No, so this is the thing, is that, we need to think about how do we do, how do we fulfill on these obligations that we know we need to do when we see, when we see blocks. Mm -hmm. So I see block. So when somebody brings me a, a, a challenge like that and they're like, oh, well, I can't do that because I don't have listings. I'm like, awesome. This is so great. Let's figure this out. And they're like, what are you talking about? I don't have listings. I'm like, okay. Are you a member of a brokerage? Yes. Have to be. You have to be one. Yeah. <laughs> Are you aware that your broker is actually the owner of every listing that they have? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Hmm. Maybe schedule 30 minutes to meet with your broker and talk about how you can market some of these listings online mm -hmm. because you're a member of the brokerage. Mm -hmm. Oh. So anytime we have these blocks, I believe, Chris, I believe that when we when we accept these blocks in our lives, these um, constrictions of what we want to achieve, I believe it's something in ourselves that is just like, you know what, I just don't want to do it. Mm. Well, not when it's about, you know, your income, which you need, you know, if you're selling real estate, you're relying on it for income. And if you need income to have food with your meals and to have, you know, shelter over your head, then you got to do these things, you know, and I think, you know, whether it's getting with your broker to get permission to market listings, I mean, heck, you could 
go to uh, one of the listing agents who does have listing and say, can I Absolutely. can I hold an open house and market the crap out of the open, ha open house? Again, you're marketing a listing. And so that's yeah. going to build your reputation. Um, you know, I think the last thing is like by focusing on marketing um, over prospecting, like it's really about marketing innovation. And it, that can be all, that doesn't have to be doing new things. Like with your brother, the innovation is doing an old school thing of writing letters to people, right? Um, or it might be a new school thing like Ted, I was sharing, he's going to do YouTube videos and YouTube ads because he's finding well, success with that. Well, that's the other thing. Like, you know, my brother, Jonathan, like extraordinarily successful real estate agent, extraordinarily. And what I can say is that Yes, he is getting back to old school, but he is also oh. new school. Yeah. This guy, he, do you remember this, Chris? Just two years ago, he said to us, I will never get on video. I look terrible on video. I hate myself on video. I hate my own voice. I'm not going to do this. Now, 90 minutes, this morning, he spent 90 minutes in front of the camera getting video that I had him getting with us. 90 minutes he was in front of a camera. And the guy, by the way, he was incredible two years ago. Mm -hmm. He thought he would, he had these limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. much like you probably do as well, is you probably have limiting beliefs about how you look on video. Here's the thing. Only you see that. We don't see that. You shoot, I mean, shoot me a video and send it to me. I'll tell you what I think about it. And it's probably going to be very positive. And the thing is, is that the more time you spend innovating, like doing video, being on social, using technology to communicate your value to your consumer base, that is where you're going to win. That is where you're going to outcompete this slew of, of real estate agents who don't know what they're doing and actually need to leave the business. But you got to get in there right now. You got to take that piece of the pie right now. But you have to you have to adopt these newer technologies that maybe you don't like. Maybe here's the thing, Chris, you and I first started doing video a long time ago. I didn't like it. You didn't like it. You hated no, it. Nobody likes it. Like, <laughs> but nobody likes I doing remember video. Chris is like, no, you're, you're doing these. I'm not getting on video. You're doing these videos. I'm like, no, nah, come on. I dragged him on video and he's like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Hmm. No, it's not that bad. And in fact, your customers. They need this from you. They require this from you, especially in times, any time of uncertainty, your crew, your people are looking to you as a voice of reason. And you have to communicate that, not just through text, not through email. You have to be present. And how do you be present right now? Video. It is the very, very best way for you to communicate your value to your consumer base and your 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 level of trust that they're going to build with you. That's how you do it. So many people, you know, that's a blocker. And I think about it like your brother, it was a blocker for him. Yeah. But we pushed him. We we're like, nah, come on, let's do this. Come on, let's do this. You know, every time he'd get a listing I, and he, when we had to get photography, I'd be like, all right, Jonathan, let's go ahead and do a little tour here. Walk around and. You know, here's the thing. It was trial by fire, whatever you want to call that. He learned on the job like oftentimes we have to do. And, you know, you think about it. I didn't realize you're right. Like I was the contrast for Jonathan just over a short period of time is he went from, you know, not having, you know, he had some, you know, basic understanding, but not feeling comfortable to now like he was riffing and we were having a good time with it. And, you know, I had written scripts that he then just kind of took and, and and just went on a riff and provided some really good stuff. And I think, you know, you can teach an old dog new tricks if the dog's willing to learn, right? Like if the dog's willing to learn and that's all right here, willingness to learn something is right here. It has nothing to do with age, has nothing to do with anything else other than the mindset that we have. Exactly. So, you know, like, and that's probably another part of it too. You know, those who are successful or those who are finding success in, in, in any market, it's about the mindset that they have about what's going on and, and their willingness to commit to resolve around, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm just keep going. I'm going to keep going, putting one step foot, one step in front of the other. And next thing you know, 
Jonathan's making great videos. I think it's a great contrast to look at where he's doing things like innovating on his marketing by doing video, but at the same time, getting even deeper into those fundamentals, like written, writing handwritten, uh, handwritten letters and notes and stuff like that. Well, and, you know, and, and also uh, here's another thing that I would say is that Jonathan and I, and you, we're not looking mm -hmm. at our real estate careers like, well, if this doesn't work out, I have something to fall back on. We're not that skilled, Gary. We we got nothing else to do. I, I got nothing else. I <laughs> like I'm I'm a real estate agent through and through. And so it's not like I have a tech job to fall back on. It's not like I have this history and and this is my first year in the career. Heck, I've been doing this almost 26 years. Mm -hmm. This is this is what I know. This is all I know. And so there is, I, I think there's another level of psychology there is that if you joining and watching this video today are thinking this real estate career, this is my career. Well, then that's a mindset. Mm -hmm. But if you're joining us and you're like, yeah, this is kind of a part-time gig. I just want to see if it works out. Thank and you me. have a fallback position. Uh, what I would say is that fallback position is probably going to become your primary position pretty quickly because of the mindset. Yeah, I've so heard you're either all in or you're not. I forget. I heard one of the real estate coaches and speaker. I forget who it was, but they were saying that you got to be when it comes to real estate, you got to be all in. Right. Like you, you have to be all in all the time. Um, you can't dabble. And when you dabble is when. You know, and, and that doesn't mean like being part time versus, you know, full time. It's more about the mindset of what you're doing. You know, you're either all in, you know, in, in staying in contact with your contacts and connections or you are not. Right? right. And you're either all in on building your reputation or you're not. You know, like for Jonathan, being all in means I'm writing handwritten letters. And I'm going to use technology and video to be able to promote, articulate my value to the marketplace. That's that's being all in. And I think when you have that all in mindset and you get busy working, it starts to remove the fear, the concern, the analysis paralysis, because you're too busy doing stuff to think about what you're doing. You're just doing it. You know what I mean? Yep. And that's where I you agree. want to be at. And the, the key about when you get into that doing mindset is don't ever drop the most important things that you can be doing, and that is marketing and prospecting. So that is, to me, it's about the mindset. It's about being all in. It's about having that marketing, that prospecting, and never, ever stopping that. Cool. Well, thank you, Gary. And if you guys have found any of this information in this video useful, helpful, please do us a big favor. It'd really help us out if you'd subscribe to our channel like this video and leave a comment in the comment section. Take care guys. And we'll see you in the next episode.